when I was in San Francisco, so I started Punchbowl because when I was in San Francisco, I used to make custom furniture, like high-end cabinetry stuff, and then I kind of wanted to have my own furniture store to sell my furniture, but it was really difficult to do that. So uh, I always like thought it would be cool to have my own cafe and sell my own furniture in my cafe. Because I was always at cafes like rendering, doing drafts of furniture and stuff. So it was like a hand-in-hand -hand environment, like furniture and cafe. So I wanted to combine the two and then see where it will take me. I want Punchbowl to be like a platform for creatives, not just myself, but other people as well, like musicians, artists, um, anything, like graphic designers, people who make clothing. So I think it'll be cool to have a place where people can show their talents. So for me, this is how I show my talent. Like, for instance, when I made the pop-up store in Waikiki, it was all handmade, and then, and that was like pretty much on the show and stuff, so. And then this truck I, I handmade pretty much for myself. Not the whole truck. But, <laughs> 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 but even like, I don't know, like making a logo or something, that's, even, that's like a piece of art to me as well, so. Add more to, you know, to I guess learn more about I guess the roots and the culture and the and the you know the lifestyle over there um, and it's awesome over there <laughs> and you know even in the music scene um, it's just, there's that this appreciation um, you know and over there there's all different scenes you know there's like the trap scene you know and everyone does all the trap stuff and there's like the golden air hip hop and all the hip hop stuff and then so there's so many over scenes there but within each scene. There's so much respect within everyone's like um, artistry. You know, they want to support each other. Like the sound check is awesome. Like the sound check, they finish and everyone like claps. Like, <laughs> like awesome. Like good. You know, this is all like sound check. So, um, so I feel you know I want to just learn more, just absorb more, more you know, osmosis, more, and just um, output music from that. Uh, I, that was my first time to Japan when we went, and I never experienced their culture before. Um, but I've never had a crowd that responsive before. Really? I played, yeah. They were, they were just really attentive, and they felt like they knew that they were there for the music. So oh, wow. like they paid for the music, so they're going to listen to the music yeah. as well. So, I mean, yeah, I've never gotten a crowd response like that before, and that was really interesting. Nice. Yeah, that was cool, because I remember this, this dad and a little daughter. Yeah. Uh, went to every one of the shows, because I was recognizing it's like front, and like the daughter was like so into it, because the dad wasn't so into it, and then she drew you a picture. Yeah, <laughs> I have it framed in my room. Nice. So, yeah, that was super nice. So every time you know, you're performing, the crowd is kind of we're following it, and, and, and you know, because it's awesome, it's like really good. And so, to have that ear, I think that quality, I think every mine of industry over there, there's just that attention to quality, like they spot quality, you know. You know what's good, good ramen, what's bad ramen, right? <laughs> you know, like, you know, what they like, what they, you know, so I feel like there's a, uh, they're very, good yeah, what's good yeah. coffee, what's not good coffee, right? Uh, so I feel like with that, you know, it transfers to the art and the music and what they like. And when they like something, they they want to you know, get yeah. into it. Like the, yeah. the hip hop scene, you know, they love hip hop and they're going to be like living the hip hop life because they feel like that's, you know, the way to do it. And that's like how I, I was raised, you know, in the hip hop scene. Like you got to know how to rap, scratch, break, crack, you know, everything. And over there, 
all the MCs I know I know how to scratch graffiti, so they take that seriously. Uh, and that, that's like all just the respect and just that, that detail that they have to whatever they do in their lives. Uh, so I'm trying to replicate that with, with my music and everything. <laughs> Yonsei uh, is an album that Nick Kurosawa and I made. Um, the idea came when we were in Japan in May. Um, we, we hung out before through Aloha Got Soul, Roger guys. Uh, but I never knew he could sing until we were in, in Japan. And when I heard him, <laughs> like, oh, okay. We need to work on an album. Or something? You guys went karaoke or something? Uh, well, we need to perform. Oh, we okay. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <Yeah. laughs> I don't want to see him in the <laughs> Yeah, but it, it came as an idea of, yeah, let's work on something. And then we just worked on a couple of songs, just those miscellaneous songs, just to kind of get used to it. And then when we started to work more with the focus, we kind of think of some kind of topic. And I guess since we're, you know, like the idea came from Japan, that maybe it should be something about Japan or, Jap you know, Hawaii or Japanese roots. So I asked what, you know, what generation you, he is he's a fourth generation or, or Yonsei, you know, same as me. And so, okay, that kind of was the beginning of, okay, let's see what, you know, what else we could be doing. Lyrically and song-wise, we're trying to create that, that, that thing. <laughs> that, you know, that, that theme of, you know, this is us, this is you know, what Japanese Americans are doing creatively right now. Um, but we wanted to talk about where we came from, like our roots. Um, you know, he was talking about more, you know, uh, what it's like to be Japanese American in Hawaii, in America. And my background is Japanese American, but born in LA, uh, Los Angeles. So, uh, was it the two halves of the very same ocean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Thanks. What are the key things of that? I mean, probably just self discovery but through a cultural historical background and just acknowledging your past to help pave the way for your future and for you to figure out like where you're gonna go and why you feel certain ways about certain things and just give yourself kind of a, a map for your existence that help you do stuff. I think, yeah. I think too now with all that you know, the kind of politics of immigration and immigrants and America. And you know, I feel like for me as a voice, you know, being in the hip hop community, you know, it's taking something negative and making it a positive. You know, sharing your voice and your story, you know, it's kind of the responsibility you have as an artist and musician. So that kind of was the first idea of, okay, who are we, you know, and then you know, how can we, you know, like Nick said, look at our past to kind of paint or kind of you know, write like the future. Uh, and for me, you know, I, in Los Angeles, there's a lot of Nisei or second generation or you know, Issei, so you never really heard about Yonsei. Growing up, you know, I was like fourth, fifth generation Japanese, and I sometimes I felt I was you know, really American um, just because I guess I was so removed from Japan as far as you know, my, my generations. It wasn't until I went to Japan when I realized, okay, I do feel Japanese. Mm -hmm. And it was the way that my mom raised, raised my brothers and I. Um, and so that affinity or that connection with Japan, yeah, I started to I guess, dive more into my history and who I am and what part of Japan my ancestors came from. And so that's my Kumamoto album was about that. And I kind of feel now um, all my music kind of has that Japanese American narrative. Of, you know, immigrant, um, kind of looking back at the history of Japanese music to kind of make new beats and new music for other things. Um, and so I feel like Yonsei is still like an extension of uh, the music scene and writing and, and beat making of Hawaii and Honolulu. Because uh, everyone's, everyone's pretty much an immigrant with a story to tell. And that's what we're trying to do with our music and, and lyrics and everything. So. Um, and we felt, you know, it had to be Japanese related since we thought of the idea in Japan. Mm -hmm. Because we're, we're working the merch booth and we're just sitting there for hours and like, <laughs> you know. And so it felt oh, like it. The, the theme had to be Japanese. Yeah. yeah. I was 
born and raised on Oahu, uh, in Manoa Valley. Um, I've been singing since I was maybe like seven years old, something like that. Um, what made you start singing? Um, I got this uh, In Sync CD. In Sync CD. Yeah. What's that? Uh, it's a, it was a boy band. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> was it Justin Timberlake one? Yeah, was yeah, that, that, was, that was a long time. But I, um, I was just jam that CD in my CD player in really? my mom's band. And we'd drive every Sunday to my auntie's house to my father and I would just blast it and sing yeah. along to this. Nice. <laughs> Seven years old. Man. Yeah. Wow. Good song. You know. I don't remember what song. It was the whole CD because that's pretty much how long it would last to draft the Manoa to our ball. Oh yeah, yeah. So JC or Justin? Um, I was a Justin Timberlake fan, I think. Nice. Um, but yeah, that was my earliest memory of singing. But I always grew up with music around the house. And, nice. Um, so, do you listen to NSYNC in Japan? What's that? You didn't listen to NSYNC? <laughs> yeah, no. I was singing to like, I mean, I was listening to like, uh... Exile. <laughs> yeah, Exile. Exile. <laughs> Same equivalent of yeah. NSYNC. Yeah. <laughs> well, my roots would stem from my grandma mostly. She would probably do the most Japanese things out of anyone that I was in contact with growing up. Um, that she was a real, she was a real hard-headed woman and very stubborn and awesome. She was a samurai. Yeah, she was, she was definitely a blue head. And she, she would say Japanese words around the house or she taught me how to play like Hanafuda. That's super old school. Yeah. Yeah. She would like put peanuts in her beer and drink her beer. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Why. <laughs> I don't know. There's pictures of me as a little baby with like a Miller Lite can and trying to open it, but I would always go grab her beers. And yep. That was, that was kind of like the experience of being Japanese in Hawaii, I guess, growing up. Like, there are certain traits within growing up that you wouldn't have growing up in like a Filipino family, but you learn all these small little idiosyncrasies that you have in different forms of culture. Right, right. I think for me, uh, being Japanese, I really feel it with the food and then the kind of the culture around the food. Uh, you know, there's just so much etiquette within you know, how you're supposed to eat. And then there's all that etiquette and detail on the other side of how they're presenting it to you. So I feel like a lot of the Japanese I just learned and the words I grew up with were always kind of related around the food scene. And then and my mom, you know, the same thing with me where a lot of those Japanese words are just thrown out, you know, like take a bocha, it's bocha time. Yeah. Or, it's like, or it's nene time, you know. What's and bocha? It's like a slang. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like the like shower, like, it's like oh, shower time. Oh, shower, yeah. Like, yeah. Bocha time. Uh, but then I don't. Sometimes I feel like some of those Japanese words are Hawaiian Japanese. Yeah, uh, definitely. Like they only exist in Hawaii. So I feel like the Hawaii connection and the Japanese, they kind of keep it more passed out, like more traditions on the Hawaii side. Uh, whereas maybe in the last, you know, when you're growing up in Los Angeles, you kind of get lost and you just try to fit in and, mm. and oh, kind yeah. of you lose your roots of who you're from. But in Hawaii, it's, there's always a reminder. Like right now, like New Year's, you know, like all the Japanese are getting all the, getting ready and all the grocery stores have all Japanese New Year stuff. You know, but that only kind of exists here because, you know, you know, LA there's New Year's, but it's not as big as like over here. You know, it's not as Asian. Yeah, it's not as Asian in there. It's kind of main man washed out. Yeah. I think it's, it's pretty amazing that there is Japanese culture outside of Japan. Like you were saying, like Hanafuda and things like that. Like Hanafuda, nobody in Japan, especially my age, like my generation, nobody knows how to play that. Well, like some families might, but. Like I remember, like my sister learned Hanafuda from a person from Hawaii. 
Really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, things like that. I think, um, like, Japanese culture way back from Japan came to Hawaii and then it, it just stopped there. Yeah. And then that culture just kept on getting passed, passed down. But in Japan, like, it, it was there, but it all got like kind of forgotten. Like nobody done dances bone dance in Japan anymore. But over here, there's always like yeah, 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 it's big. Like I don't know how to dance bone dance, but yeah, I think it's a great thing. And there are sometimes like where it becomes its own culture in Hawaii. Like mm. it's almost like it's Hawaiian culture yeah, yeah. instead of like Japanese culture. Yeah. Like, I feel a lot like of the wave of immigrants, you know, because yeah. they either went to San Francisco or they went to Hawaii. Yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like a lot more of the Japanese went to Hawaii. Right, right. And it's just all like, you know, like for us, it's like the great grandparents, first in Hawaii, and then grandparents, then our parents, and then us. So yeah. like, right. All, you know, in, in Hawaii. Yeah. And, then, and there's probably all the other people during the war, too, and they just set up their lives here. And then, right. You know, they didn't want it to go to the mainland. Like my mom, she was, her parents are born in Maui, uh, but then they moved to Northern California. And then when the war happened, they were in the internment camp. And so my mom was actually oh, born wow. in an internment camp. And then maybe after a month, that's when the war ended. And then she, they moved back to Northern California rather than in Hawaii. Oh. So, she, so she's never been to Maui before. Uh, okay. She, you know, she, she was so far removed away from there from the war. Yeah. And then just Northern California and then she got married and then, you know, grew up and, you know, just, wow. you know, just lived life in Los Angeles. It's crazy. But, you know, but the Japanese cultures are still there, and, you know. Yeah. Um, and that was an interesting time because, you know, you're Japanese, like in Hawaii, they went to go for broke, right? They're Japanese fighting against Japanese yeah. in the war. And it, over in America, you're Japanese American, you know, third fourth yeah, generation, yeah. but then you're still was looked at as, as the enemy. Right. Yeah. So yet, how 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 much can you prove that you're American? Right, right, you right. Know? So that's why they had to give up all the Japanese and all. So at that time, a lot of people just the records of a lot of the history were just lost because they couldn't show any signs of being Japanese. Right. Yeah. So they, they had to give up everything and then live a American this American life. <laughs> yeah. So whatever that means at the time. Mm. Just to say that. Uh, in Japan, like they don't teach that history about yeah. like internment camp. So when I first went to San Francisco and I went to City College and I took like uh, Japanese American history. Okay. Went to Manzanar. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. <laughs> yeah. Never knew. And it's it's like super sad that they had to like be Americanized mm -hmm. and even now you see it in, see it in different form almost yeah. like people yeah uh, it's pretty much the same thing when they're yeah you know, like, you know um, like the Syrians and the Muslims right like, you know they wanted to do the whole you know yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty much. it's like you, yeah. it happened before then it's happening again now yeah that's why it feels like whatever culture or ethnicity you have, it's really, like a lot of people are trying to dive more into that. Like right. Learning about more about themselves and their you know, ethnicity and then, you know, what does that mean in America now? Yeah. You know, what is American, you know, when you're talking about right. immigrants, right? Right, right.